Hello, my name is Alan. And welcome to the next in my video series on building a Windows desktop application with Python. In today's video, we're going to cover probably one of the trickiest things that took me a while to learn, and that is PyQt's layouts and containers. Enjoy. If you haven't already watched the first video in the series, then please review the following prerequisites before you begin. So if you look in the description below, you'll see a zip file. Download that and open it. You'll see a subfolder called test2. And inside that is our user interface file called main.ui. Open that in designer. And you'll see the static layout that we created before. The reason I call it a static layout is because it doesn't dynamically adjust itself to when the user resizes the window. See how it's stuck in the upper left corner there? We want to turn this into a proper Windows GUI where everything is sort of dynamically ad adapting to how the user resizes it. To do that, we need to take advantage of an element called containers. If you look in the widget section on the left, you'll see there's a whole section of containers. And we're just going to focus on the frame container. So we drag that into our window. I'm going to go to the property so I can actually see the frame more clearly and change the frame shape to a box and the frame shadow to just plain. Now we can see our frame container. Now most of the time you're building a Windows GUI, all you'll ever need is a frame container. And you can use as many of these as you need. You can organize a bunch of widgets inside this container, like maybe some buttons, for example. We'll just use buttons for simplicity now. So we have two buttons in this container. And we want to make another container with buttons in it as well. It's important to realize that you can even, if you want to, you can nest your containers. So we can have a container within container. If this container should resize or move around, the container within it will also adjust accordingly. It's important that every container that you use has a layout. And when, I, when I'm talking about layouts, I'm not actually talking about using these widget layouts. In fact, I actually discourage you from using the widget layouts and how you'll, you'll know it's a widget layout is it'll have this red frame around it. So we don't want to ever use the red framed widget layouts as nice as they may seem. They're actually more trouble than they're worth. And what you really want to do is always use a container and then always assign a layout to whatever your containers are. We have two containers right now and to set a layout for a container, you pick the container and then you pick one of the layout options here at the top. You have a horizontal layout a vertical layout, a grid layout, and a form layout. Most of the time you're going to use a horizontal or a vertical layout, and occasionally you'll use a form layout. But for now we need to define either a horizontal or a vertical layout for each of these. So let's say we make this one a vertical layout. So we just pick our container and then we pick vertical. And you can see it immediately forces everything inside that container to be vertically laid out. And if we pick this container and we say we want it to be horizontal, you can see how everything within this container, including the other sub container, is horizontally laid out. Now you can change the order, maybe you want to have it over here, but it'll stay in a horizontal position no matter what you do. You can resize it, but it will dynamically resize. So containers with layouts are really going to achieve a dynamic GUI. And the last important thing to realize is that even your window is a container. So the window itself needs to have a layout. But that's usually the, the last thing you do. Usually what you'll do is you'll build, just like I did for this example, you'll build your lowest nested container and set its layout and then work your way out to this container and then to the last window container. So let's go ahead and turn this GUI into a dynamic layout using containers. 
the very first and most obvious container is this set right here. These, where you have a pair of labels and edit fields together going down like this, this is what's called a form. So we can actually create a frame container. And again, just for visibility, I'm going to set our container so that you can see it. And we're going to set our container to a form layout. And you'll notice it's grayed out. The reason it's grayed out is because we have to have some widgets inside it before it allow us to set a layout. So let's take our form items, which are really just static because they I made them look neat, but as you can see here, they're not actually in a form. They're just statically laid out. And we'll drag them into our widget. And then we'll pick the form layout. And usually if you have them statically laid out well enough, it will be able to arrange them properly in the form in the same pattern. So you won't have to tediously realign them. If I had them laid out poorly, they may or may not have come out perfectly and you might have to relay them out inside the form. So now we can see it is a form and how it grows at least horizontally as I drag it left and right. So now we want to add our split button and just for as an example, I'd like to have the split button show up right here, but a form layout can only have pairs, a label and a widget. So how would we get a third widget in here when it won't let us? If I add it, we try to add it, it's going to put it as a, another element in the form, which is something that we don't want. To do this, we need to actually have another container. So we'll grab another frame container. And again, I'm just going to make it visible for us here. And we're going to put our button inside the container. Resize a little bit for space. And we're going to take our edit field and also put it in, in the container. And again, the rule of, have, of containers is always set a layout for all your containers. So this container clearly is a horizontal layout and we want to put it back. Now it's a single item and we can put it back into our form. And the first thing you'll notice is one characteristic of containers is they have a bunch of margins. I'm not sure why they set the default margins to nines. So the, the left margin, the top margin, the right margin, the bottom margin to nines, but I almost always end up changing those to zeros. Now we do want our layout spacing to be six. That means the space between different elements inside the widget. Okay, so now we've got our widget is nested inside our form and now it grows and shrinks the way we'd like it to. And the last one is we wanna have our close button to be on the bottom of our Windows form. And one way to do that, you guessed it, is another frame container. And we'll also make that visible. We're gonna put our close button inside it. And then we're gonna use what's called a horizontal spacer. And that will act kind of like this edit field did, but it's not a visible element. So if we make this a horizontal layout, and then if someone wants to resize it, you can see it keeps the button to the right side no matter what. And again, you can see we have our margin around it that we don't want. So we'll change those all to zeros again. And now we have our two containers. We just want these two containers to be stacked vertically inside our window. And since I said our window is also a container, we just need to pick our window, pick a, a blank area here, and then pick a vertical layout. It's really close, but it still doesn't look the way we want it to look. What we need to do 
The last thing we do need to look at is the properties of these containers. And specifically, we want to look at the horizontal and vertical policies of, of the containers. We want this container to always expand to its maximum size. And this container will just leave it as preferred vertical policy. So if we pick this container and make its vertical policy expanding, now it pushes it down to take up as much space as available and keeps this container uh, to its minimum size. So now you can see if we resize it, it looks kind of like the GUI that we really wanted all along. Typically, I won't keep my containers visible like this. I was just doing this so you could see where the containers are. Typically, I'll go and I'll turn them off. So no frame, no frame, and this nested one is no frame. And we can preview it under form preview. And that's what our GUI would actually look like once this code is run. So we can save this and run our code. And we type in our name, hit split. And sure enough, our code still works, but this time we have a dynamic GUI. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this session. And our next session, we will cover unhandled exceptions. And I promise that most Python users will find that particular session very useful because it will save you a ton of time debugging problems. So I'll see you then. Bye.